Good morning, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us today in worship. My name is Caitlin Spears, and I have the privilege of saying good morning to everyone or good afternoon whenever you're able to watch this video with us. We have just passed Giving Tuesday, and at church this week, we've all been wondering, what is your family's favorite charity to donate to? We would love to know in the comments. Thanks so much. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Good morning. My name is Pastor Andrea, and I would like to welcome you to Sunday morning worship here at First United Methodist Church of downtown Bentonville. If this is your first time with us, we want to say a special welcome to you. And we would love to get to know you. We have a way for you to do that. We have a connect card pinned in the comment section. And if you, do, if you don't want to do it right now, please feel free to go to our website to fill it out later. And once you fill out the connect card, we're going to connect with you by sending you a welcome um, gift to you on this week. We invite you right now to go ahead and like and share this video with your friends on your Facebook Live. And we also encourage you to comment throughout worship, to be a part of our worship. We love to read and engage with you through our comments. At this moment, we're going to invite Brett and um, Diane to come forward for our Advent reading. Our lists are long, even in the strange mess where we live these days. And we want to do it right. We want to be safe. We want to be able to enjoy the season. We've got work to do to put right what has gone wrong, to heal what is broken, to mend the relationships, and to prepare for the company that will come. The prophet Isaiah reminded us that there is work to be done. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. When God comes in, then healing is to be found. But we need to make the way. We need to open the door into our lives. So, we light these candles as a sign of our faith that the God we worship is not far from us and we can clear the way for God to come and dwell with us. We light these candles in faith that company is coming.
Good morning. My name is Reverend J.J. Whitney, and I want to add my welcome to Pastor Andreas. It's so good to be with you this morning in worship. We turn to our Holy Scriptures to the letter, 2 Peter, chapter 3, verses 8 through 15. But do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be dissolved with fire, and the earth and everything that is done on it will be disclosed. Since all these things are to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be in leading lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set ablaze and dissolved and the elements will melt with fire? But in accordance with this promise, we wait for new heavens and a new earth where righteousness is at home. Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, strive to be found by him at peace, without spot or blemish, and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. And then a second reading from the gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God as is written in the prophet Isaiah. See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way, the voice of the one crying out in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and with a leather belt around his waist and ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down. And untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. After John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaimed the good news of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come. Repent and believe in the good news. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. We turn to your word again, holy God, a word to lighten our hearts and strengthen our faith as we continue to watch and to wait in this season of Advent. We see the light that is coming into the world, and we pray that this light would also be in our hearts. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Now, I've been teasing Pastor Andrea because she is strictly observing this Advent season by waiting to put up her Christmas tree. She has encouraged us as a worship team to hold off on our Christmas carols as long as we can to be faithful to this Advent season. I have zero patience. And like many of you, I wanted to usher in this Christmas cheer as soon as possible. We ordered a new tree this year. And we said goodbye to our old one in the move. So we discovered the day after Thanksgiving as we opened the box that the top of our tree was missing. But I couldn't wait. So I went ahead and uh, decorated two-thirds of our Christmas tree for this season. As Pastor Andrea mentioned in her sermon last week, the season of Advent means coming or arrival. And so these four Sundays before Christmas Eve, are supposed to show a little restraint. Jesus hasn't been born after all, so we wait. The Christian practice of observing Lent began in the fourth century, and it was a time for people to prepare for baptism. Advent, a time to think about what it means 
that we join the church and we begin a new life in Jesus Christ. So if we understand Advent as a time to prepare, it makes sense that we would focus on preparing the way of the Lord on this second Sunday. The Gospel of Mark invites us to remember the words of John the Baptist in our Gospel reading for today. John told his followers to repent and to believe in the good news as the kingdom of God was drawing near. He foretold the coming of the Messiah, the coming of Jesus into the world. It's always felt a little odd to focus on John the Baptist on the second Sunday in Advent. This man of the wilderness, clothed in camel's hair, eating locusts and wild honey, talking about the coming of the Messiah. It just doesn't feel Christmassy. But Advent stands in contrast to how Christmas is celebrated and how it has emerged throughout history. Christians no longer wait to observe Christmas between Christmas Day and Epiphany, the 12 days of Christmas. But we follow the culture. We put up those trees. We celebrate Santa between Thanksgiving and Christmas. And now it, it doesn't even seem like we can wait until Thanksgiving to begin celebrating. But what the church has focused on for centuries during this Advent season is not the birthday. It's not the celebration of the birth, but it is the second coming of Jesus Christ. And that leads us to our scripture lesson from Peter's letter, because it speaks about Jesus Christ's return to earth. The disciples during the first century, they truly believed that any moment Jesus was going to come back to earth and erase the lines between heaven and earth to usher in the kingdom. Now, the time that Peter is writing this letter, he is far into his ministry. And the Christian community has been waiting a long time for Jesus to come back. Peter begins this letter warning against the scoffers who are doubting that Christ will return. And he reminds them that our timing is not relevant to God's timing, for whom a thousand years is like one day. Peter writes, The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some think of slowness, but patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. God isn't being slow. It's God's timing, for goodness sake. But what do they do while they wait Peter encourages the community to see this waiting as a time that God is being patient. God gives them time to repent, time to get their lives together before Jesus returns. Peter writes, Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, strive to be found by him in peace without spot or blemish and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. Now, United Methodists, we don't spend a lot of time throughout the year thinking about Jesus' second coming into the world. We're usually emphasizing the here and now of our Christian discipleship. However, we proclaim Jesus' return to earth each Sunday when we come to the communion table. In the great Thanksgiving, we say Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. It is a core belief that we truly anticipate the return of Jesus into the world. We believe that his return will right the wrongs of the world and bring in a new age. So we too practice waiting, just as those early disciples did. We practice what it means that we exist in this in-between time, between the time that Jesus came into the world and the time when Jesus will come again. And we now have the time to repent, or in Hebrew, to turn back to God and live more fully into the kingdom that Jesus Christ revealed in his birth. We hear those words from John the Baptist as we wait. It is a holy invitation to turn our hearts back to God during this Advent season. Written 173 years ago, Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol was an instant bestseller. And it's been adapted for screens from everything from the Muppets 
to Mickey Mouse to a Nashville Christmas Carol on Hallmark this year. Now, when Dickens wrote the story, he was disturbed by seeing the child labor around him, and he wanted employers in London to know the plight of the poor. As this short story was published, the Victorians called it a new gospel, for the message revealed such a change of heart for its main character, Mr. Ebenezer Scrooge. Dickens introduces him as a squeezing, wrenching, grasping, scraping, clutching, covetous old sinner. And we do find in him a miser of a man. We see those pictures of him counting stacks of money and turning away acts of kindness or requests for charity. At the beginning, Scrooge's nephew visits him, and he says, Merry Christmas, Uncle. God save you. Bah, said Scrooge, humbug. Christmas a humbug, Uncle? You don't mean that, I'm sure. I do, said Scrooge. What right do you have to be merry? What reason? You're poor enough. Come then, replied his nephew. What right do you to have to be dismal? You're rich enough. Nephew, keep Christmas in your own way, and let me keep it in mine. Scrooge's nephew answers, I have always thought of Christmas time as a good time, a kind, forgiving, charitable, pleasant time. The only time I know of in the long calendar of the year when men and women seem by one consent to open up their shut-up hearts freely. Now, most of us know the story of the Christmas Carol, when Scrooge's partner, Jacob Marley, pays him the, a visit in the form of a ghost and warns him that a life of selfishness will lead him to an eternity weighed down in chains. And Marley informs Scrooge that three spirits will visit him during the next three nights, the ghost of Christmas past, the ghost of Christmas present, and the ghost of Christmas yet to come. Now, looking at the past, we find Scrooge among the company of his old boss, Fizzywig, and he's engaged to Belle, and we find that Belle leaves Scrooge because his desire for money takes priority over love. When he's met by the ghost of Christmas present, Scrooge visits his partner, Bob Cratchit, who's living in extreme poverty, and Scrooge is struck by Bob's disabled son, Tiny Tim. And that final ghost stands among the graves and points down to one. And Scrooge says, before I draw near to the stone in which you point, answer me one question. Are these the shadows that will be? Or are they the shadows that may be? And Scrooge creeps toward the stone. And he reads upon it his own name, Ebenezer Scrooge. Spirit! He cries, hear me. Now, I'm not the man I was. I will not be the man I must have been. I will honor Christmas in my heart and try to keep it all the year. I will live in the past, the present, and the future. The spirits of all three shall strive within me. I will not shut out the lessons that they teach. So he wakes up. It's Christmas Day. Joys in his heart, and Scrooge begins to undo all the harm that he has done. And Dickens ends the story with this Scrooge was better than his word. He did it all, and infinitely more. And to Tiny Tim, who did not die, he was a second father. He became as good a friend, as good a man, as the good old city knew. And it was always said of him that he knew how to keep Christmas well if any man alive possessed that knowledge. May that be truly said of us. Now, we humans, we tend to rely on our own time. We rely on our own reason. As Scrooge said, you keep Christmas in your way, and I'll keep Christmas in mine. Maybe we need the cheer and the lights and the warm feelings of Christmas time because we start to doubt that Christmas is available to us all the time, all the year long. Peter's letter was written for those who were in doubt 
to remind the Christian people that expectant hope is always our existence. We are changed by the fact that Jesus has come into our hearts, and we know that Jesus will come into our hearts again. If there is any gift that we've been given during this pandemic, it is time. We have time to visit our own spirits of Christmas past and present and future. We have time to remember the past people and places that shaped us. Time to ask people to forgive us. Time to grieve the losses that we've been putting aside. Time to let some things go. We have time to mend some of our regrets as we reflect on the present. Is this the life that we chose or the life that chose us? And time to think through the future. How is God calling us to exist in this in-between world? Are we, in the words of Mr. Scrooge, in the shadows of what will be or what may be? Scrooge's nephew said it well. Merry Christmas, Uncle. God save you. Because the name Jesus means God saves. We proclaim it together as we come to the table. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Because we know that God saved us. God is saving us. And God will save us again. We open up our shut up hearts and learn that God's heart has always been turned to us, waiting and expecting for us to return to him. Let's keep part of this Advent season holy, a time to reflect and to pray before we turn to the celebration of Christmas that will always come. May it be said of us that we kept Christmas well. And may we turn our hearts back to the one who is saving us throughout all of time. Thanks be to God. Amen. As we open up our hearts and respond to the message, to God's holy word that we have received today, we respond by the gifts that we offer and by our participation in the kingdom of God. So I invite you to open your eyes to the needs around you. I invite you to give today, and you'll find many ways to give as listed on our screen. Thank you for your gifts that ensure that we can connect people online during this pandemic, that ensure that Old Time Hensing and Wednesday with the Weatherfords are available to you and to our community. We're so grateful for this season of generosity in which we can give to support our neighbors in so many ways. So as we continue to worship God through our tithes and our offerings, Let us go to God in prayer. Holy God, come into our hearts with power and compassion that we might always be strengthened with the gift of your presence in our lives. May we respond with generous hearts to all the ways you have given to us. Bring light to our darkness, healing to our brokenness, and peace to us all. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Him is down by the Jordan. Join us in singing. God will put 
Please join me in our affirmation of faith. We believe in God, Creator, greater, infinite in wisdom, wisdom, power, and love, love whose mercy is over all God's works, and whose will is ever directed to good for all people, people on earth. earth. We, we believe, believe in Jesus Christ, Christ the incarnate Son of God, God and, and Son of Man, man the gift of our Lord's unfailing grace, grace, the, the ground of our hope. hope and the promise of our deliverance from sin and death. We believe in the Holy Spirit as the divine presence in our lives, whereby we are kept in perpetual remembrance of truth through Christ, and find strength and help in the time of need. We believe that this faith should manifest itself in the service of love as set forth in the example of our blessed Lord to the end of the kingdom of God, Become Become on, on the earth. earth. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. As heralds of God's good tidings, let us lift up our voices with strength this day, praying to the one who comforts, restores, and heals. Let us pray for all leaders and people of the world. You have created one human family to live in righteousness and peace. Give us the wisdom to order our common life according to your loving purposes, that your glory may be revealed and all people shall see it together. Let us pray for your church. You've given us the gift of the Messiah, that your church may be steadfast and true. Give us strength to follow your son until all have come to repentance and are reconciled by his love. Let us pray for those who are sick, who suffer need, who are exiled or in danger, who have made us, you have made for us for a holy purpose, to comfort and care for each other. Give us compassion to love our neighbor and patience to care for those in need. Let us pray for your creation. Your faithfulness springs up from the ground and your goodness wilts down from the sky. Rid us of the laziness and greed that diminish life as you teach us to care for your creation together. Let us remember those who have died, ever living God. One day in your presence is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day. Make us one with the saints who have found their eternal home in you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.
And the people said amen. We've been so blessed by beautiful music this morning and all the mornings during this online community season. And so I invite you to come back next week as we feature our musicians, our music through both of our services. At the gathering at 9 a.m., we'll have songs and stories. And at 11 o'clock, we'll have lessons and carols. And we'll talk about the story of Jesus through scripture and through song. It's a special Sunday. So join us next week for the third Sunday of Advent, our, our Sunday of joy. As we prepare to come to the communion table, I want to remind you that this is an open table, so you do not have to be United Methodist. You do not have to join our church in order to be welcome to come to this table. And to remember that as we bless the elements, as we give thanks, we remember that Christ is present. We celebrate the risen Christ as we bless this bread and this juice. So I invite you to get your communion kits as we gather and as we get ourselves ready to come to the table.